Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and today I've got another video for you sharing my experiences of the civil service interview process. Today we're going to be talking about the making effective decisions behaviour. A few of you have asked me to talk about this so I thought I'd put together a video and share some examples and my experience of this behaviour. Okay, the first thing to note about making effective decisions, it doesn't have to be this huge decision that is groundbreaking or has made a massive impact. We make decisions daily in our roles and it's just about thinking about a time when you've made a decision where there were a few options and this decision that you made was effective and then talk about the result of that decision. The main thing this behavior is trying to work out is your thought process behind how you make decisions. The interview panel are looking to see whether you gather evidence, use data, etc. in order to inform your decisions and don't just go based on a gut feeling or an instinct that may not be backed by evidence. It is important to show that even though sometimes there are a multiple of options that you can make a decision and that you are willing to make a decision. Particularly if you're leading a team or leading a project, often there will be multiple opinions and it's important that you can show that you can make the decision when needed. It's also important to show that you can take into account other people's views and opinions. A lot of the time when you are making decisions based on evidence, there will probably be one or two individuals who don't see things from your point of view. Be expected to be probed about this at interview because a lot of the time we make decisions and then it's all about how do we engage these people and how do we get these people to buy into our ideas. By gathering evidence and using data, this is what gets people to buy in because we can say, these are the benefits and these are the pros of that option, etc. And you can highlight the points which led you to making this decision. This is really helpful if you have some tricky customers. So at interview, be prepared to talk about a time where maybe you've had to get someone to engage in your ideas after you've made a decision. Okay, let's talk about a competency style question that you might be asked at interview. Again, this is my experience. This isn't official guidance but I've gone through some examples that I think I've been asked in the past. Give me an example of a time when you've had to make a decision and there were multiple options. The main part I'd like to highlight guys is make sure you pick an example where there was an actual decision to be made. What do I mean by this? Well, I mean, make sure there were multiple different options and all options were actually plausible. The last thing you wanna do is say there was option A and option B and option A was clearly the best option and no one in their right mind would pick option B. What you want to do is present two options that were both plausible and highlight the pros and cons for picking either. This shows the interview panel that there was actually a decision to be made. <laughs> I just thought of a funny example actually. It's like being in lockdown trying to decide what takeaway you want to order on a Friday night. There's a multiple of options. Maybe you fancy a Chinese, maybe you fancy an Indian, maybe there's a pizza, or maybe you remember that you've got a Deliveroo voucher and you're thinking, mm, maybe we should get a Nando's. With all these options, how do you make a decision? Well, you make a decision by gathering the evidence and doing a list of pros and cons for all of them. You then consult with the household to see who wants what and ultimately you form a decision. There's probably gonna be someone in your household who wants the thing that you don't want and vice versa. What do you do to this person? Well, you present them with the pros and cons. You try and persuade them to get on board and see things from your point of view. So let's put takeaways aside for a second and let's think of this in a work capacity. Try and think about a time where you were genuinely torn with options. Maybe you had two options, both were extremely plausible and try and think of what made you decide on which option to pick. Then think about the evidence you gathered for both and why you went with that option. Also think about any pushback you received and how you got people on board with your point of view. Make sure to include the result of having made this decision. A lot of the time these decisions can occur at the beginning of a project. For instance, I'm an analyst and a lot of the time decisions are made on what data sets we use or how do we present that data? And usually there's a good number of options, so it's about gathering evidence for each and making a decision and going forward. If you're a graduate, for instance, in university, maybe think of a project such as your dissertation. I know a lot of people have to 
pivot their dissertation questions as they go through because they decide that something isn't available. Think about that decision, you know, do you pivot to a different question or do you commit to what you've started and try and finish that? There is no one size fits all answer to this, unfortunately, because our roles are completely different. So there's no point in me telling you how I would answer this because the likelihood is that your role is very different to what I do daily. Hopefully though, this section will give you some food for thought and you'll be able to think about examples that present this quite well. Let me know if you've come up with any examples down in the comments below. I thought I would include a strength question in this so you can hopefully get an idea of the type of questions that you may be asked regarding making effective decisions at interview. If you don't know what strength questions are, I recommend you go and watch my other video where I talk about my experiences of the success profiles process and I'll link that in the card or down in the description below. Based on the guidance for strength questions that I've also linked down below, there are a variety of definitions and strengths that map to each behavior. So a behavior that we're focusing on is making effective decisions and there are four different strength definitions that all map to that behavior. You'll see that the strength definitions that are mapped to making effective decisions are analytical, decisive, problem solver, and being a preventer. Read through the guidance that I've linked down below that is also publicly available and get a feel for what the definitions of these terms actually mean. The idea of these terms is that they're used to assess whether this is actually a strength of yours and that contributes to the overall behavior of making effective decisions. So if you're analytical and it's a strength of yours, then this aids in making your decisions more effective because you can see the evidence surrounding each of the options when making that decision. For instance, a strength question that you could be asked for analytical is, do you enjoy making evidence-based decisions? Or for problem solver, it could be, can you solve complex problems? The key with the strength questions are not just to say yes, but to say yes and say why. So for instance, if you do enjoy making evidence-based decisions, why do you enjoy doing this? And then go on to say how. And a nice way to do this is think back through your job history and give some brief examples. You don't need to do the star approach because this isn't the competency style question, but a nice little job history of maybe where you've made evidence-based decisions in the past, or maybe where you've solved complex problems can be a nice way of getting the conversation flowing on these rather vague strength questions. That's all for this video. I hope it really helped. I know a few of you had requested it. So if you do have any more requests, please let me know down in the comments below. I do have one ask. I am very close to hitting 50 subscribers on this channel. I know, we're, uh, we're going big time. <laughs> However, if you do enjoy these videos, please can I ask you to hit the subscribe button down below and help me reach 50 subscribers. That would be amazing. Thank you very much in advance. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Take care and as always, I'll see you in the next one.